Hi folks, this is Brother Neuro. Now, I know when I normally do my news segments, this is normally this isn't going to be like the previous ones because there's a few things that normally you know you associate with my news videos and that is one i don't normally talk about stuff that's currently going on in the news like you know brexit and uh, donald trump i try to avoid them and also there's another part of it which is i try to keep it obviously very light-hearted and make jokes about it but this just I, i'm i'm blushing them out of the way i just need to get this out of my fucking system because i am fucking i'm just so pissed off right fucking now and i just have to now there's an election coming up on december 12th it, and and i know i know that this is you know i know i'm not telling people who to vote for you know where my allegiances fucking lie you know where i'm where my where my positions are right but in the last few I, i've just you know in the last couple of days you know you know we've we're, we're only 36 fucking days away from this election the things these people that this talk the, the tory party have been doing it's quite frankly fucking it, it, it's beyond even my comprehension at this fucking stage i i cannot get my fucking head round it and what's more i can't get my fucking head round how anybody out there who has a fucking who has an ounce of Fuck it, you as you know. I don't care how important certain things are to you. There comes a point, you know, where you draw a fucking line in the sand. And if we haven't reached this, then I and we haven't reached this now, then I have to say, fucking when. Now, there's several things that have happened here. Number one is on the first day, literally almost immediately, and this is a first apparently, I'm just going to play you the clip because they explain it a little bit better than me. In April last year, Ross England, a former aide to the Welsh Secretary, Alan Cairns, gave evidence in a rape trial. Now, as a result of his testimony, the judge accused him of deliberately sabotaging that trial and threw him out of court. Eight months later, in December last year, the Welsh Conservatives selected him to be a candidate in the Welsh Assembly elections in 2021. And at that time, he was endorsed by Alan Cairns as a friend and colleague. Now, when Ross England's role in the collapse of the rape trial came to light, the party suspended him and Mr Cairns said that he'd become aware of the collapse of the trial some considerable time afterwards and had no knowledge of the role of Ross England. But it turns out that Mr Cairns was sent an email by his special advisor in August of last year. That email says, I have spoken to Ross and he is confident no action will be taken by the court. Now, the Conservative Party said today that there's no new information in this leaked document and they say it's consistent with statements made. But the victim wants Mr Cairns to step down and in the middle of a general election campaign, Alan Cairns is now under renewed pressure to clarify exactly what he knew about this and when he knew it. OK, so there's... So there's that one. There's a woman uh, running for the Tory seat. Uh, her name's Francesca uh, O'Brien. And she got fucking in trouble again. This is all in one day, by the way. She got in trouble because there was this TV show in this country many years ago called Benefit Street, which was uh, which was a horrific piece of programming, really. And it was done really just to sort of play on the idea that people who claim benefits are all dishonest, lazy, scrounging fuckers who don't actually want to do any fucking work and they're just trying to leech off the system. It played into that. Now, don't get me wrong. The people on the show were genuine and fucking awful. But to pretend that this was anything more than a fear-mongering piece of, you know, of, of, of right-wing propaganda is, is laughable. And this woman, when this show was being, uh, being posted in 2014, posted on her Facebook po page, Benefit Street, anyone else watching this, wow, well, these people are unreal. My blood is boiling. These people need to be put down. Right now, this was on Facebook. I'm quite, even me, even me, I am quite happy to sit there and, I don't believe that she actually meant these people are going to be put down. I'm sure, I'm positive she was speaking in a sort of, you know, hyperbolic, exaggerated tone. But there's a problem with that in that you don't, there are some jokes you can tell when you're a politician and there are some jokes you can't and particularly when you're a Tory politician you do not post on Facebook particularly in this day and age that you are fuck you want to put down 
people on benefits on a TV show that you should be, these people should be put down. You don't talk about exterminating people who are claiming benefits. And she was asked to fucking step down, but now maybe that's not a big enough deal for you. But then, then we get on to fucking Jacob Rees Mog and what he fucking said. Now, I don't need to fuck. I'm sure if I say the words Grenfell Tower to you, you know, you know probably what that means. There was a fight, it was a tower block that had been fucking basically made out of like out of tracing paper and fucking petrol and it burned down several years ago. And there were 72 innocent people who burned to death in this tower block, right? And 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 this week, and there was recently an inquiry into which which seemed to be blaming the firefighters. Yes, the Tory inquest into it seemed to blame the firefighters, right? For the for, you know for, you know for you know because they asked they they request they told people to stay where they were. Obviously, the firefighters not realizing that this fucking thing was basically one big fucking Catherine wheel waiting to go fucking. It was basically made out of dynamite. And it was going to go up in flames and everyone was going to be killed. I'm pretty sure the firemen didn't do that on purpose. I mean, call me. I trust a fireman over a fucking Tory, pol Tory party inqu inquisition. You know, just call me old fucking fashion. But then you get Jacob Rees-Mogg, this fucking rabies infected fucking balloon knot who wants to who came here and offended and decided to chip in his two cents about the 72 people who died in fucking Grenfell Tower and by 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 attacking them for not having enough common sense I'm just going to let this play out the more one's read over the weekend about the report and about the chances of people surviving if you just ignore what you're told and leave you are so much safer and uh, I, I think if either of us were in a fire, whatever the fire brigade said, we would leave the burning building. It just seems the common sense thing to do. Because it's in keeping with the theme of Brexit. Let's ignore what the people who, you know, who know what they're doing. Let's ignore the experts. Now, in this case, you could argue we had a fucking point. But this is obviously hindsight's always twenty twenty. Maybe we shouldn't have had, yeah, maybe we should have, like, yeah, if you or I, if you or I... Right now, he's talking to Nick Nick Ferrari on LBC. Nick Ferrari, you know, nothing to do with this, right? By the way, but he's saying if you or I were in a fire, you or I, we, it's just common sense. Right? There's nothing common about Jacob Rees Mogg. This, there's nothing. God, this motherfucker wore a monocle when he fucking was at school. This is a motherfucker who sits there and calls people like you know who, call, who, who likes to use the term liberal snowflake. This motherfucker is against, still against gay marriage. It's 2019. Right, and fuck you if you fucking sit there. If you if you if you find the idea of two men or two women getting fucking married offensive, you don't have a fucking right to call anyone a snowflake. You pompous, water softy looking motherfucker. Right, you apps you fucking hoof wanking bungle cunt. I am so, you you just. You know, who the fuck sits there and starts talking about, you know, I mean, I've heard, I, I, I've seen some fucking, you know, politicians say some fucking horrific shit. I've seen people on the internet, but this guy's sitting there attacking the common sense. You know, why didn't you all just decide to fucking walk out? Why did you not do that? That's just if you or I, right? Yes. What white people, smart people, British people. What is it? What did he, What exactly do you fucking mean? And then, now, obviously, you know, even Jacob Rees-Mogg was able to work out the fucking, you know, horrific offence he must have caused here because uh, even he, he was he, he was compelled to issue a fucking apology. Apology, and and uh, and just listen to this. This is his. This, I mean, you know he's you know that you fucked up when Rees-Mogg is issuing an apology, but let me just listen to this. I profoundly apologise, right? And, oh, by the way, he didn't make this statement, he didn't make this apology publicly, he didn't make this fucking, you know, he didn't go on the radio, he didn't stand out in public and say it, he didn't address this in fucking person, who went. he didn't go and meet the fucking survivors or do it, he, do, he didn't do fuck all, he issued this in a statement that was issued to the fucking Evening Standard. Right, the Evening Standard, which, by the way, is owned by fucking George Osborne. Right, he issued it in a statement. He couldn't even fucking say this out loud. I profoundly apologise. 
What I meant to say is that I would have also listened to the fire brigade's advice to stay and wait at the time. Oh, you just left that out, did you? If you or I were in a fire, you know, we would just, you know, common sense says we'd get out. I mean, I'd also, I'd listen to the firemen, but I'd be like, fuck you, fireman Sam, fuck you. Now, however, with what we know now and with hindsight, yeah, those are both the same thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, and I don't think anyone else would. Yes, well done, Jacob. Yes, well done. Fucking top, you know, top bollocks to you, mate. You were able to look at Grenfell Tower and think, do you know what? You know, looking back on it, if I was there at the time, you know, if I could see into the future, I'd have fucking legged it out of that building. Well done, you absolute fucking weapon, right? I would hate to upset the people of Grenfell if, 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 I was unclear in my comments. Well, if you would, would you, I would hate. You have, right, as well as anyone else with a fucking beating fucking heart, my friend, anyone with an ounce of compassion left in their fucking soul. And what do you mean, if I was unclear? You're making an apology and a clarification, you fucking stupid fucking ring sausage. Of course you fucking, you know, if you were unclear. Right. With hindsight, and after reading the report, no one would follow that advice. That is the great tragedy. Yes, the great tragedy is, Jacob, is that no one followed your advice. That you so profoundly and fucking wonderfully, fucking your, your golden ingot of wisdom that you shat out on us. Onto the fucking, you know, onto the, onto the fucking grieving relatives of the 72 dead people. And I don't give a fuck if anyone wants to accuse me of fucking being emotionally manipulated. That no, bull fucking shit. If you don't get, if this, if this is not, if you are not emotionally fucking moved by this shit, then I don't know what to tell you. I'll tell you what, I won't even tell you. Let me just play something. <laughs> That was a four-year-old girl who's now dead, along with her three-year-old sister and her mother. Do you know why? Because they didn't have the common sense that Jacob Rees Mogg fucking has. Cunt. And then, with all this bad shit going on, the Tories, you know, trying to do some damage control, wheel out this guy uh, called, uh, what's, he, what's his fucking name? Nadim Zahawi, right? They wheel him out there. Make, they need someone to stand there and take the bullet because Boris Johnson doesn't want to address all this shit, right? Jacob Rees-Mogg clearly doesn't want to address all this fucking shit. And... The, the the you know for me they took him on what for me is the is the is the real sort of yardstick of when you know when you're when you're a conservative and you're on the, or you're on the right and you've just gone too fucking far they put him on the Andrew O'Neill show and Andrew Neill like he did with Ben Shapiro and uh, many and many others but Alex Jones has to sit there and be the voice of fucking reason. Nadim Sahawi, the Secretary of State for Wales, was forced to resign today because he'd endorsed a Tory candidate for the Welsh Assembly that he knew had been part of the collapse of a rape trial. If he's not fit to serve in the Cabinet, why is he fit to represent the Vale of Glamorgan? In his letter, he does say that he's confident he can clear his name. Um, this is obviously a very sensitive issue and there's still he legal proceedings. He won't clear it in time for the election. Uh, but, look, a man is innocent. Is the, you know, this, this country prides itself on its legal system at okay first of all can i just point this out i am sick of people who sit that yes the legal system innocent until proven guilty in, in, a, in fact you're not even proven you're not even innocent because you're either guilty or you're not guilty and being not guilty doesn't mean you're innocent it just means you couldn't be proven guilty but that aside i'm so sick of it when people sit there and try and sit there and go like uh, like that is the legal system's fucking standard it's not 
I, I don't have to, I and nobody else is obliged to sit here and follow that. When people say, what happened to innocent until proven guilty? Yeah, that's if you're on trial. If I just, if, I, if in my opinion, you're fucking guilty, right? Fuck you. That's my fucking right. And I think that the people of the Vale of Glamorgan will um, back Alan, will return because he's been a very fine constituency MP. I think the people of Wales will back this guy because they're the kind of people who don't give a shit whether or not you fucking endo endorsed a guy who fucking was responsible for trying to fucking slander and defame a rape victim. Because that's what's more important. That's the kind of guy we want. Another cabinet minister, Jacob Rees-Mogg, mm. he opined that if more Grenfell Tower residents had ignored the fire brigade and left the building, more would have survived. What possible qualifications does he have to make that judgment? Well, he has apologised unreservedly uh, when he misspoke. Oh, the old classic phrase, misspoke. Now, just so we're clear, because he's going to use this term misspoke a lot. It seems to be something that's a bit of an ep epidemic going through the Tory party. But this is the favourite turn of phrase or phrase of choice when people sit there and talk about, you know, when some politician puts their foot up their fucking ass, is they misspoke. Now, the definition of misspeaking is basically like a mistake. It's like you, you, you said so, you expressed yourself insufficiently or you know you you weren't articulate you weren't you weren't articulate or sufficient in how you expressed yourself and i find that and there's you know and some cases yes that's perfectly believable but when you're jacob reese mogg who is let's be honest one of the more well spoken members of you know of the of, of, of you know politicians out there and members of the tory party and particularly when you're speaking about an issue as sensitive as the Gren as Grenfell Tower, I think you, sh I think you know, misspeaking is not good enough for me. And this, he apologised unreservedly. He wrote one fucking paragraph, and he even had to qualify that. And he even he couldn't even sit there and just say, "I'm sorry, I'm a twat." Ten times, he had to put. He had to put. You know, if, you know, if I wasn't clear and I don't wish to offend you, you know, but the tragedy is that nobody did what I fucking said. Not good enough for me. Um, and I think... He misspoke. It, he did, absolutely. Uh, uh, Andrew, have you uh, never misspoken in your life? Have you ever met a human being that's never misspoken? And then they pull this bullshit. And, uh, oh, are you telling me... Like, when, when this was going on when Boris Johnson was getting called out for lying a couple weeks ago, and they, literally they were... Everyone was talking to... Oh, are you telling me no, you've never lied before? I'm not the fucking Prime Minister. I'm not in the higher... I'm not in the fuck... I, I've not been tasked with the responsibility of being a high... You know, a, a, a very high, a powerful and influential cabinet men member in the fucking... In the Tory government. Or any other government. And the tell you what, the day I fucking, I'm, I'm just some cunt on the internet who fucking, who sounds off. And even I get fucking held to a higher standard than this shit. Yes, I misspeak. But I guess what? I've never misspoken in a way that offended the fucking dead. But what does this tell you about his mindset or the Tory mindset? He's never lived in a tower block. We don't even know if he's ever been in a tower block. Uh, he's certainly never been trapped in a fire in one. Oh, one day, Andrew, if there's any justice, he will be. He will do. I mean, this, isn't this the a new height of Tory arrogance to lecture the people of Grenville on what the common sense thing would have been to do on that terrible tragedy? Well, first of all, no one has the right to lecture the people of Grenfell. No apology is good enough for the people of Grenfell, which Including is why his. We, we held an inquiry. Um, we have the, phase, the first yeah. phase of that inquiry, and we're absolutely going to deliver on the recommendations. There'll be the second phase right. of that inquiry. Yeah, you held an inquiry which determined that the f it wasn't the people who decided to put flammable, to build a, to make a tower block out of flammable materials, or the people who let it fucking just, you know, who didn't fucking fix it after, you know, after the fact. No, it was the fucking firemen. It was the fire brigade. They were the ones who was, you know, it, they, them, they, do they need to apologise? The second phase of that inquiry, and no doubt they'll probably blame the people in the building for being, a, being in there in the first place. But, look, to but your he point, pays no price right, for, the, but, for these words. Well, hold on. No, he has paid a price because he has had to come out and apologise, rightly so. 
Did you get that? Right. Andrew O'Neill said he hasn't paid a price for his mistake. And he just said he has paid a price because he's had to come out and apologise. That is, in this fucker's mind, and in the mind of the Conservative Party, that is a price you have to pay. Coming out and coming out and apologising to the grieving relatives of the fucking dead. That is a price he's had to pay. And he says this just after saying that no apology is good enough. I hope you get your ass destroyed by a shire horse. I really do. But look, let's just step back a second, Andrew. Right, if this is about demonising the Conservative Party, because that's what Labour is good at, to say that we're nasty Tories. Do you know... Yes, you see, yes, you see apparently it's Labour who are demonising the Tories, because it was the Labour Party who, by the way, haven't even mentioned, I think, you know, haven't even mentioned, it was the, it's the Labour Party, isn't it, who, who made Jacob Rees-Mogg fucking sit there and say that comment about Grenfell. It was the Labour Party who made Francesca O'Brien say that stuff about putting down people on benefits. And it's the Labour Party who fucking endorsed and, hi and hired a guy and endorsed a, a, a candidate who fucking was responsible for defaming a fucking rape victim. Yes, it's, it, it's them, isn't it? So far, the Labour Party have barely mentioned this and they fucking should. But I tell you what, if they did... Right? Is that demon? It's, it's, they're using this to demonise you? Maybe if you lot wound your fucking necks in for 10 seconds and thought before you opened your fucking cake hole, maybe it wouldn't be... Don't make it so fucking easy. To dehumanise, to demonise people is a process that then allows you to attack them in all sorts of ways. I am so it's the poor, a conservative. It's, it's the poor, poor Tory party no, that are victims now. No, no. You're being demonised. No, no. You have every right to criticise and to um, challenge our policies. None of this is about policy. This is nothing to do with policy. This is everything else. This is about you. This is about the people you fucking are. And, and believe it or not, in politics, not everything is about policy. In politics, it fucking matters what kind of human being you are, because then your policies are fucking, you know, if you're the kind of scumbag who says and does shit like this, then maybe I don't give a fuck what your policies are. To challenge when we make a mistake, but to say that the whole party is somehow a, you know, a, a nasty organisation is simply not true. Do you know what? He's right. You know, for, the, for anyone to demonise the entire, every Tory, or every, you know, or, or everyone in the Tory party is wrong. So how about this? I'm going to play you a clip now from 2017. This is a guy called Dominic Cummings. You might have heard that name. He is currently the senior advisor in the Tory party to Boris Johnson. In 2017, he was working uh, with the, with, uh, with the uh, vote, vote Leave. And I want you to listen to what, what, what did Dominic Cummings say in 2017 about the Tory party? That, um, what's one of the core problems of the Tory party brand going back decades? Yes. NHS and people think, by the way, and I think most people are right, the Tory party is run by people who basically don't care about people like me. Right? That's what most people in the country have thought about the Tory party for decades. I know a lot of Tory MPs, and I'm sad to say, the public is basically correct. <laughs> Tory MPs do, largely do not care about, 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 about um, these poor people. They don't care about the NHS. And the public kind of has cottoned on to that. And that guy... Again, senior advisor to Boris Johnson in 2017, telling you that they don't give a shit. They fucking hate you. But no, you're right. This is all the Labour Party demonising you. Well, I can tell you what it says is when we have uh, the first Muslim Chancellor of the Exchequer in Sajid Javid, uh, a boy from Rochdale living above a shop, we make him Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now this guy's trying to play the old, you know, oh look, some of my best friends are fucking brown. Uh, because, you know, because the, yes, you are right. Yes, you are absolutely right. You know, this is the most ethnically and culturally diverse Tory cabinet ever. And let's have a look. See, one of the people, you know, he didn't mention, but let's bring up uh, Pretty Patel. Pretty Patel 
uh, in, when was it? Uh, she, she was one of the five people who contributed to a book uh, in, in 2015 that was called, no, sorry, in 2012, that was called Britannia Unchained, Global Lessons for Growth and Prosperity. And in that you know, book, Pretty Patel, uh, along with uh, Demonic Rab, uh, they described uh, they described British workers are quote among the worst idlers in the world. That the UK rewards laziness, and that too many people in Britain prefer a lie in to hard work. That's what they think of you. And this was in tw this was seven years ago. That's what they think of you. All you've done by having the most ethnically and culturally diverse fucking you know tory cabinet is prove that it is prove a point that it doesn't matter where you're from where what gender you are what set your sexuality your ethnicity your religion if you're a tory you're a fucking cunt and while we're on the subject of of dominic rab is a is a clip of his is, is a you know just a sound bite to give you an idea about him my name's dominic rab and i'm a tory I don't support the Human Rights Act, and I don't believe in economic and social rights. If you're expecting some pithy comment, I've got nothing. I've, I've, I, I don't, I, if you need me to add anything. But of course, let's talk about demonisation, because what did Boris Johnson try to do this week, recently? You know, what did he just try and say about Jeremy Corbyn? What was it? Remind me. Is that why the Prime Minister decided to kick it off this morning by comparing Jeremy Corbyn to Stalin's persecution of the Kulak? Yeah, you heard that right. Boris Johnson yesterday compared Jeremy Corbyn to Joseph Stalin. But let's see, let's see how old Nadim manages to fucking get through this one. Judge Jeremy Corbyn, by his words, he says that he wants to increase taxes on business because he is obsessive about tax rate, mm. not tax take. You know this better than any, anyone. He wants to mm. you know, really hammer businesses um, and doesn't like the idea that right. corporation tax is down at 19%, coming down further right. to 18 and 17%. Right. By the way, the take into the Treasury has gone up. Why? Because businesses invest when they see that actually the right. government's on their side. I mean, it's it's basically, it is, I mean, it's that is Stalinist, isn't it? You know, that, I mean, that's Joseph Stalin through, and that is exactly the same. You know, I have, like I said before, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I don't tell people who to vote for. Right. I express my opinion. You know where I stand. You make your own decision. I don't ask you to fucking, you know, but all I want you to do, right, if you're, you know, and I know, I know how important Brexit is to some people. And I know there are people who are going to sit there and try and, are there are good people who have been, who are going to be drip feel compelled to try and brush this off or sweep it under the rug or even try and defend it. And you're going to try and ignore it. Well, let me tell you, if Boris, if, if the Tories and Boris Johnson win on December the fucking 12th, <coughs> and if we leave the EU on January the 31st, these are the fucking people you are leaving us in the capable hands of. Unfettered. Unrestricted. To do as they fucking please. And is that fucking worth it because i don't think it is that's just my opinion these people if you're an, if you're someone who is working class or you're disabled or a minority or an immigrant or you're the, you're someone who've happened to burn to death in a fucking building or you're a fucking victim of rape these people don't give a shit about you and if you think leaving the EU and leaving them in the fucking leaving us in their hands is going to make this all better, then I want some of what you're fucking smoking, because Christ knows I'm going to fucking need it. My name's Dick Coughlin. Love you. Bye.